Hi everyone, and welcome back to my first Let's Build Profile of the Year, this time centered on building full combo Sunseed slash Sun Avalon, now with the new Therion's archetype that has been revealed for Dimension Force. As always, disclaimer up front that this is supposed to inspire you to build this deck and strategy better yourself. I'm not trying to build the best deck in these type of videos, only a proof of concept, and this build definitely lives up to that with having a couple cute little engines going on that you might want to build around. So let's start building this deck with the basics, and that is Sunseed Genius Loci. The Sun Avalon archetype is a group of plant link monsters that grow out of this Genius Loci, or Loci, I'll refer to it for the rest of this article, which is a level 1 normal plant monster that just exists. The other key Sunseed monsters that will feature, especially throughout some of the combos later, is Sunseed Twin, which summons a Loci back from the graveyard whenever it's summoned while you control Sun Avalon Link, and Sunseed Shadow, a uh, level 1 that can extend itself from the hand whenever you consult, control a Loci. Additionally, both these monsters have an additional effect from the graveyard that interacts with Link monsters, but again, we'll cover that later whenever we show a little bit of the full combos. Outside of that, their main purpose really is their primary effects. Since Loci is the absolute unit and the starting block for a lot of your plays, you want to make sure that you have plenty of ways to get to that initial loci. Luckily for plants, that exists in the form of Lone Fire Blossom. This is the ubiquitous plant tutor. It's able to tribute a plant to summon any other plant monster from the deck, and this is really a driving force between any plant strategy, and Sun Avalon is no exception. But since Loki is a normal monster, we can also run three copies of Unexpected Die to pull it directly from the deck whenever you control no monsters. And as a last resort backup plan, you have one for one, which can be used to send another monster from your hand to the graveyard to summon that Loki directly from the deck. And if you already have a copy of Loki, you can summon any other level one monsters, such as Spore or some of the other plant monsters we'll cover a little bit later. If you notice this build here, runs 10 cards, so the four spells, three Lone Fire, and three Loki, that result in a Loki off the bat. And if you run the numbers, that's about a 69.8% chance that you will open one of these cards in a typical five card hand. What that means is that in two thirds of your duels, over two thirds of your duels, you're going to start with a Loki, and that's rarely important for a lot of your combos. And so this whole profile is designed to show you what you can do with some of those cards and some of the engines you can run with that to really make the most of these combos. So let's f start with the other namesake of this Let's Build profile by talking about the Therion theme. This is a newly revealed archetype that all special summon themselves from the hand by equipping a monster of the same type from the graveyard to it or another Therion's monster instead. Luckily for us, the key Therion search monster, Therion's Lily Borea, is actually a plant monster, so it synergizes with the entire rest of your deck, all of your other plants that you're running. So, as I said, Borea can summon itself from the hand by equipping a plant or another Therion's, and then while it's on your board, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard to add a Therion spell or trap from your deck to your hand. So use this by equipping a Lone Fire, then just sending that equip Lone Fire in order to get the search. In terms of what you're searching, you'll be searching the Therion's Field Spell, Therion's Ring, the Colosseum Saucer. This Field Spell tutors another Therion's monster in activation, but it also includes two other effects that are actually quite helpful for your board, despite being underappreciated by an advantage focus game. The first effect, protects a monster from being destroyed by battle once per turn by sending a Therion card from your deck to the graveyard instead. And then secondly, whenever any monster is destroyed by battle, including your opponents, you get to recover a Therion's monster from your graveyard and put it back into your hand for future use. In our combo tree, this is primarily used to search our next Therion's monster I'll cover. But this also means that you can use it to recover cards and continue in the duel especially if you get into a little bit of a grind game after your initial play. Moving straight ahead, let's talk about that other Therion's monster you're going to be searching with Ring, and that is Therion's King Regulus. 
another level 8 Therion's monster, but this time it's the machine. This machine monster, his second effect, can send a Therion's monster card from either your hand or field, so that can be an equipped Therion or the king itself even, to negate an effect of an opponent's activation, activated card or effect. So it doesn't negate the activation, but it just negates the, act, uh, the effect of that card. Lastly, I'm also checking in one copy of Therion's Leaper fam. Um, this is the Aqua Therion's. It's only level 7. I'm including it because it's a little bit better in the situation where you're going second, where you need to clear something out of your opponent's board before you can really move forward with your combos. Feel free to replace this if you do build this deck yourself with maybe another copy of Regulus, or I have an example of some other Therion cards you can consider, but it's just an idea to help break boards. What this Therion's engine actually does that is pretty impactful here is that it protects your deck from Nibiru, which is something that Sun Avalon up until now has been extremely vulnerable to. You see, if you field Regulus as your Fist Summon, you actually have that effect negation at your disposal to be able to negate the activation to Bureau whenever your opponent tries to wipe your board. And so let's talk about how easy it is to get to that Fist Summon. And the easiest way to describe would be if you just start with a Lone Fire Blossom. So if you summon your Lone Fire, summon one, use its effect to tribute itself to summon Mardell, Generator Boss of Light, that gives you a level 9 plant that also tutors any plant monster. Enter Borea. So if you tutor Borea off of Generator Boss, you can then summon Borea as summon 3, equipping that initial lone fire from your graveyard. Then you can use Borea's effect, sending that equipped lone fire to the graveyard to tutor your Regulus. You have two plant monsters on the board already, in the form of Mardell and Borea, so just combine those two into any of your Link 2 monsters, such as Aromacerafi Drasman. And then as your fifth summon, you can summon that Regulus from the hand, equipping Borea from the graveyard. While that's not the most streamlined of plays, that is a way to get a 5 summon Nibiru uh, blocker. And that's really important for a deck, especially if you go into a tournament where you're playing matches and you even like a casual tournament and you know your opponent is going to be running that Nibiru that you need to watch out for. But what happens if you don't draw that Lone Fire, if you don't want to use your Lone Fire Summon on your Mardell and really going through that combo chain? And that's where other searchers for Borea come in. I particularly like Rose Paladin. Uh, it can just be discarded, and it's a warrior, to add a level 7 or higher plant monster from your deck. So you can use that to add Borea or one of the other higher level plants that you can run as an engine, such as the Reek engine I'll cover in a second. But another option is Rosebell of Re Revelation, which can be used to tutor any plant with 2400 or more attack. Again, in this build, this really only covers Borea, uh, but having a combination of both makes sure that if you draw multiple copies, you don't just have dead cards in hand. So let's move on from this Therion's engine and the cards that support it, and start talking about the next batch of plants. And this is really the segment where I'll talk about the other plant archetypes that are playing a role here and really helpful for the deck. And we're up first with the small Rika engine. So Snowdop the Rika Fairy uh, can tribute a plant to summon itself and any other plant from your hand to your field, but that does restrict you to only summon plants for the rest of the turn. Mudan, the but the Rika Fairy can, again, summon itself by tributing a plant, but whenever it's summoned, uh, you're going to be able to tutor a copy of Rika Glamour, uh, the theme search spell that can also be used to search other plant monsters if you tribute a plant upon activation. And the last Rika that's part of this engine is Primula, the Rika Fairy, which can summon itself from the hand whenever a monster is tributed, and then it also can augment levels, but that very rarely comes into play. Speak, uh, the Riga engine is all about setting yourself up with more plants and then also manipulating your levels while gaining access to some Xyz monsters, as Riga is that Xyz plant theme that we've seen before. And since the main monster actually requires just two level four uh, monsters, so the main Riga monster, Strene, the Riga queen, which we'll cover in a second here, that's down here, the rank four, 
uh, you can actually run generic level 4 extenders. And since this is a link theme, uh, running three copies of Parallel Exceed is a great way to just take advantage of that and make that first initial strenning. Moving on for the Reek engine, the next we're going to talk about a smaller plant, and that's the aromas. Aroma lore, aromage laurel, sorry, um, can is another plant, generic plant extender that can special summon itself from the hand whenever you have higher life points in your opponent. And then whenever it's sent to the graveyard, you gain 500 life points, and this will be more important when we get to Jasmine. Similarly, Aroma Seraphie Angelica is another aroma monster, uh, revolves around gaining life points, and then it also extends, but this time from the graveyard, whenever you have an aroma monster and have higher life points than your opponent. Again, if you're not getting the theme here, a lot of these plants will be able to summon themselves, and all those can then be converted into link material and ultimately convert into a really strong end board. The last aroma card in the main deck is Blessed Winds, which is actually tutored off of the Synchro Monster, Aroma Seraphie Sweet Majorum. And Blessed Winds can be used to gain life points on the fly, as well as recover aroma monsters from your graveyard as needed. Plants aren't just contained archetypes though. Uh, if you think back to the good old days of Plant Synchro, Plants just have a lot of generic, great cards that can help support any game plan. And that's sort of the next segment here, is talking about the plants that help out the deck. World Carol Weight Champion is a level 4 plant that can summon itself back from the graveyard by sending another plant from either your hand or field to the graveyard. Cactus Bouncer can be a one-way ticket to winning the duel and locking down your opponent, since uh, neither player can special summon monsters while another plant is on the field. Perfect. Uh, the one downside to Bouncer is that you actually really have to start with that unexpected die for your combos to be able to make the most of it, since it does require the normal summon to get out of your hand. Rose Girl is up next, a level 3 tuner that can special summon itself from the hand whenever any plant is sent from your field to the graveyard. And then additionally, if you don't use that effect, you can use its graveyard effect to actually recover itself from the graveyard while you control a plant. So that gives you a little bit more of an extender slash extra resource as needed. And then lastly, we have the good old Spore, uh, which is a plant tuner that can modulate its level and summon itself back from the graveyard. Uh, there's a reason why this card is included in just about every plant deck uh, that uses the extra deck. So let's move on away from the plant specific stuff and talk a little bit more about combo engines since that really is the focus of this deck. And right now this smaller engine here is Blackwing's Zephyr Rose the Elite, which is a level four that can summon itself back from the graveyard by bouncing a face up card that you control to the hand. And then Foolish Burial, which it serves as another copy of Zephyr Rose, uh, getting him into the graveyard. This is an essential combo piece for really making the most of your Sun Avalon plays. However, if you don't need it to combo, your just combos get augmented by two times, get a much stronger end board if you do open it. There are some other uh, replacements if you want to run more copies like Zephyros, uh, such as Perform Mage Trick Clown or Stardust Trail, uh, but we'll cover those a little bit later in the additional tech options section. The last combo card I have here is Symbol of Heritage, which synergizes extremely well with any plant deck that runs three copies of Lonefire, since if you remember right, Lonefire can tribute any plant, including itself, to summon any other plant from the deck, including another copy of Lonefire. So your one Lonefire can actually turn into three copies of Lonefire, but then can be summoned back from Symbols of Heritage to get even more plants from your deck. So it's just a themed monster reborn for Lonefire Blossom. Next up are just two staples, Upstart Goblin for obvious reasons, um, and Monster Reborn. And finally, we'll wrap out the main deck by talking about the Sunvine and the Sun Avalon support cards. First up is Sunvine Shrine. This is a continuous spell uh, that is activated by sending a card from your hand to the graveyard whenever you control a Sun Avalon link, but it can summon a copy of your Lokai back from the graveyard each turn. Note that this that all these effects are not hard once per turn, uh, so you can bounce this back to the hand with Zephyros, for example, activate it again and get another summon back. This really does help you extend your plays. 
And the other is the newer Sunvine support card, Sunvine Sewing, which special summons a Sunseed monster directly from your deck, making you take a thousand damage. However, if you don't have a Sun Avalon or, out already, you can only summon a Lokai. So in actuality, these, these three extra support cards really serve as another three starters for Lokai, driving that percentage I talked about earlier in this video even higher. So odds are you're going to open your Lokai and really start diving into your combos. And then finally, we have Sun Avalon Bloom, which is a continuous trap card that sort of is a one-sided monster effect negate uh, that can be activated whenever you control a Link 4 monster. And luckily for the Sun Avalons, the, their Link 4 monster actually tutors this card, so they'll have this uh, blanket negation at their disposal. I've made a lot of references to the extra deck, so let's just dive right into that first before talking any more about this theme. The first three copies slots in the extra deck is really contained to Sun Avalon Dryas, and this is really the starter of the extra deck. It's Link Summon using any level 4 or lower plant, but if you summon it using Lokai, and then summon Dryas into the extra monster zone, it actually tutors one of your Sunbind cards. So again, that's either Shrine or Sewing. Additionally, Dryas is a second effect that lets you gain back any battle or effect damage you take during a turn, and special summon one of your Sunbind monsters from your extra deck. So that gives you another Link monster. Remember, there's a couple of cards already that have shown that inflict damage to yourself, such as Sunvine Sewing, or even Zephyros. And both of these will actually trigger Dryas' effect, allowing him to give you another monster, such as Sunvine Thrasher, which just gains up to 3200 attack, so it can be a 4000 attack link mon one monster, or Sunvine Healer, which goes with the theme of gaining back life points in the Aroma monsters, which gains back life points based on a Sun Avalon monster you control. Moving along from the Link 1 monsters, the next step that I'm choosing to run is Sun Avalon Melius. This is a Link 3. It's made by any two plants, including a Link. And whenever it's summoned, it recovers a Lokai right back from the graveyard. So make this, get back Lokai, and congrats, you have all the materials for rank 4. Link 4 summon already. Speaking of Link 4, we have Sun Avalon Dryantrentier. Not sure how you actually pronounce this one. Whenever Dryantere is uh, Link summoned, it tutors your Sun Avalon Bloom directly from the deck, and it also carries an effect that it can tribute a Link monster that it points to to destroy any number of cards your opponent controls up to that monster's Link rating. This can be great if you're forced to go second, or even on the third turn of the duel when you need to clear out your opponent's board a little bit more. And it's just helpful to be able to interact with your opponent, especially if they build up a strong board. The next Link monster I'm going to cover isn't a Sun Avalon by name, but by practicality, it's pretty much a Sun Avalon in all other regards. And that is Bengalancer the Resurgent. Bengalancer is a plant link that loves the Sun Avalon theme since it's made by any two plant monsters. It summons itself back from the graveyard by banishing uh, link monsters from your graveyard whose combines ratings equal four. So think Melius plus any of your link ones. And during either player's main phase, it has a quick effect that targets an effect monster your opponent controls, bounces it back to the hand, and then you take damage equal to the attack of that bounced monster. Remember, if you bounce a monster, take damage, your Dryas will gain it right back and give you a free Sunbind from the extra deck for your troubles. So this really is a great combo card that works well with the theme. We've been talking so much about all of these extra deck monsters and all these engines, so let's get into the plant extra deck monsters that sort of connect to those engines. And again, we'll start with the Aromas. Next up on our slots are three copies of Aroma Seraphi Drasmin, uh, which is a key plant link monster. It's made by two plant monsters. It has a pseudo lone fire effect in that it can tribute a plant, or any monster really, that it points to to special summon a plant from your deck. And then additionally, as a non once per turn, a non hard once per turn effect, 
Whenever you gain life points while Jasmine is on the field, you get to tutor any plant monster from your deck to your hand. That means that if you summon all three copies of Jasmine over the course of your turn and gain three life points three different times, you get to tutor three more monsters. And since so many of the monsters that I've covered, especially the plants, are all great extenders, uh, you can really extend your plays super far and keep make, putting more and more material onto the board to convert into more and more stronger monsters and get to stronger end boards. The last Aroma monster is Aroma Seraphie's Sweet Majorum. As I mentioned before, this will tutor your Blessed Winds whenever it's summoned, that continuous trap card. And additionally, whenever you gain life points, you get to destroy a card your opponent controls. So that gives you a little bit more control over your opponent's board. And that brings us to the Xyz monsters, the final two monsters of the extra deck. Strenne the Rika Queen is our rank 4 that I briefly touched on earlier. It can detach a material to recover a plant or Rika card from your graveyard. And then whenever it is attributed while having Xyz material, so that can be by Lone Fire, that can be by Jasmine, that can be by Eureka monsters. Again, you have options. It special summons a different plant Xyz from the extra deck and then equips Strene, attaches Strene as Xyz material. In this case, we're running the Sacred Tree Beast Hyperion, which provides yet another negate for your deck, uh, since it can detach a material of the same type of card your opponent activates to negate that activation. Now that I've walked through all the cards that make up the core main deck, the core extra deck, let's talk about the strategy here. What are you trying to do with the Sun Seeds, with the Sun Avalons, with all these plants? And let me just start by saying that this deck thrives on combos. We're talking Endless Chains of Summons, Link Summons, syn uh, Synchro, Xyz, and more. It's actually quite common to lose games with this strategy because you've used so much of your extra deck on your first turn, and you just slightly run out of steam to be able to continue the duel and take all your opponent's punches and fight back. And just as a note, a more pure version of Sun Avalon, if you run all of their Sun Avalon link monsters, uh, can actually extra link off of a single copy of Loki. So summon a Loki and you can extra link on the board. So this theme has plenty of summons to be able to do that. It has plenty of summons to do anything you really want. But as you can clearly see, I didn't go that direction with this build. I really wanted to focus it and showcase really what you can do more feasibly with and what you can actually bring as a casual or even partly competitive strategy for fun. So let's talk about more of the hidden potential of this theme. And it takes the best plays of these other archetypes, so it adds the Therion negation. It adds the Rika into uh, Hyperiton. It adds the Aroma disruption. It basically takes the best of all these different themes and combines them into one cohesive strategy, all linked together by the Sun Avalon monsters. And that's the true spirit here. So since this deck is really all about combos, I'm actually gonna turn this Let's Build into just talking through a couple of these combos in detail, showing you how they work, and then calling that a day. So instead of running full replays where I just solitaire against an opponent that can't break the board, I really wanted to just showcase the replays and talk through it. So let's do that next and talk through a couple of combos. We're going to start with the most optimal hand and work our way back down. So let's just do one copy of Unexpected Die and a copy of Zephyr Rose the Elite to get started, and we'll go from there. Here we go. Let's start by activating Unexpected Die. This will pull a Lokai straight from the deck. Now, we can Link Summon immediately into our starter, Sun Avalon Dryas, which will then trigger, since I used Lokai's material, adding Shrine from deck to hand. Next, we'll activate the Sunbind Shrine, discarding Zephyros, and then immediately bringing back our Lokai from the graveyard. Now that we have Lokai in the field, we can bring back Sephiroth, bouncing Sunvine Trine to the hand, and then it inputs 400 to ourselves. Dryas will then activate, regaining that life points and summoning healer from the deck. Healer is important because it's going to gain us 300 life points and make our life points higher for an aroma combo later. Now that we have everything in set, let's make it our first Jasmine. 
Jasmine will then activate, tributing tri away that Zephyros we had there into our Lone Fire Blossom. We won't chain all the way through all three Lone Fires, but we'll definitely go through one and two. We'll save the third for later. And now we'll summon out Mardell, Generator of Light. Mardell activates, tutoring any plant, and at this point we're going to grab that Laurel I just mentioned. With Laurel in hand and higher life points, we can activate its effect, special summoning itself from the hand, and giving us even more material. And this means it's time for Jasmine number two. Link summoning with Mardell and Laurel, we make Jasmine number two, and then Laurel activates, gaining 500 and triggering both Aroma Seraphy Jasmine to tutor more plants from the deck. At this point, we'll grab a Mudan, the Riga Fairy, and we'll grab a Spore that we're going to end up ditching later. There's Spore. Alright, next up we'll summon that Mudan directly from our hand, tributing the Jasmine specifically in the extra monster deck. And then when Mudan is summoned, we'll grab a Glamour from the deck. Since we have an open extra monster deck zone again, extra monster zone, we'll just immediately go into that tribe, since this is not a once per turn effect. It was summoned by, uh, by Lokai again, so we can tutor out another Sunfine card. In this case, we'll grab the Sewing. And since this Mudan is looking rather useless, we'll tribute it away with Rika Glamour in order to add Primula and another level 4 plant. In this case, we're grabbing our Carrot Weight Champion. Since we just tributed a plant monster, Primula will immediately activate, summoning itself from the game. And now it's finally time to activate this Sunbine Shrine again. Discarding our champion, so that way it can immediately come back from the graveyard, sending that spore away. We have two level 4 monsters, so let's use them in order to make Strene the Rika Queen. And then we'll detach Primula in order to recover one of our Lone Fire Blossoms. We're going to keep this in hand for later. Now that we've recovered our Lone Fire Blossom, let us bring back our Lokai. We'll bring this back first. And now we will make Melius. Melius will activate, bring back Lokai again. And now we have everything we need to go into Sun Avalon Dry, which is our Link and our Melius. Dry and Trent Dry, well, however you say that, again, it's a difficult, we'll tutor that Bloom directly from the deck. Now, since we have the level 1 Lokai and we have a Spore in our graveyard, we'll banish that Primula we recently used. In order to summon Spore back, it's a level 5 monster. 5 plus 1, that equals 6, so we'll Synchro Summon Aroma Seraphim to our Joram. Our Joram will then trigger, adding our Blessed Winds to hand. Finally, we're actually going to use our Normal Summon. I know, we've been waiting so long to do this. We'll Normal Summon an extra copy of Lone Fire, and then use its effect, Tributing Strene. If I can click on it, in order to tutor Arborea from the deck. Strene will activate the graveyard, which then summons our other Xyz monsters, Hyperiton, and then attaches Strene back from the graveyard. Borea will now activate. Sending Lone Fire to the graveyard, you could really send anything, but I'm just going to send Lone Fire here because it's pretty useless on the board. In order to tutor Artherion's ring, the Colosseum Saucer. The field spell is then activated. And we'll even trigger Hyperia here because I just activated a spell card, reattaching the unexpected die just so it can negate a spell or a monster effect on the next turn. When ring resolves, we're gonna add that king to our hand uh, to our hand. Next, we got two zones, so it's finally time to use Sunfine Zone. We will summon Sunseed Twin directly from the deck, take a thousand damage, and then Twin will activate, summoning a Lokai right back from the grave. Next, 
we will link summon yet again into Jasmine number three. And this time we're going to use Borea and we're going to use Twin. Lokai can then be used to make Sunvine Healer. And since we have a link four, we can target that, gain 1200 life points, trigger Jasmine yet again. Marjoram will also chain on, but since the opponent doesn't have any cards, it really doesn't do anything. At this point, we'll search out a Rose Girl here. Next, we can actually use the Graveyard effect of Sunseen Twin, which you can banish a Link Monster and hit to summon a Link Monster you control a copy of in your graveyard. In this case, we'll just grab another Jasmine. So now that we have two Jasmines, we will Link Summon them together in order to get our fake Sun Avalon and use Rose Girl's effect, just for good measure, to summon it. Finally, we'll activate our Therion's monster, equipping Borea, summoning itself in the hand, equipping Borea, and then setting Blessed Winds and Bloom. And voila, there is your end board. So in conclusion, starting with the two cards of Zephyros and Unexpected Die, you end up with Regulus, which can negate the effect of an activated card by your opponent. You have Hyperion, Harpyriton, who can negate the activation of either a monster or a spell, given its Xyz materials. You have a set bloom that can be used to negate uh, your opponent's all your opponent's face-up monsters, so negate monster effects. You have a set Blessed Winds, which can gain you life points upon command, which will then trigger Aroma Seraphy Sweet Marjoram. And you also have a uh, Benglamancer the Resurgent, which you can use to bounce an opponent's monster they summon. In addition to all these interaction tools, you also still have your Therion's Ring, which protects a monster from being destroyed by battle during the next turn. And even if it is, it recovers a card from the graveyard. If you really want to add on and add insult to injury here, you can use that Rose Girl and Link to the Dryas as well. Um, this is your third and final Dryas, and that only leaves you with a single monster in your extra deck. But then if at some point they clear out your Hyperiton, or if they clear out your Dry Enchantry, uh, you can actually take damage from uh, the Resurgent, gain it back with Dryas, and summon that last monster from your extra deck to the zone that one of your Link Monsters points to. So if you really want to add Insult to Injury, you can do that. But I'd recommend just stopping at the Rose Girl and calling that a day. Again, let me repeat, we did all this with two cards. When you start a duel, you're going to start with a five card hand. So you have so many other options that you can actually extend your plays even further and build a stronger board. But this is really the optimal hand that you can get, is just if you start with a Zephyros or a Foolish, for example, and an unexpected die. So now that we went through this optimal two-card combo, let's take a step back and say we didn't get the perfect hand. Instead, let's um, let's just back up here to the deck. Let's say we got a Lokai and we got a Parallel Exceed. And those are the two monsters that we're starting out the duel with. Let's see how this one works. Alright, here we go with two cards yet again. But this time we had the unfortunate reality that we have to summon Lokai first manually. We'll summon it, Link Summon Dryad, and also chain Parallel Exceed. We'll just get this out of the way out of our hand. Dryas is actually going to grab a Sunvine Sewing this time, since we don't have something we want to send to the graveyard. Exceeds will trigger, giving us our second level 4 monster, and our two will immediately link up into Strena and Exceed. Since we know their options, we'll go immediately into Sunvine Sewing, which will summon a Sunseed Twin from the deck, and since I control a Sun Avalon monster, it'll summon Lokai back from the graveyard. Since Sewing inflicted a thousand damage to us, Dryas is going to gain that right back and summon a Sunbind Healer to the zone it points to. Healer will then trigger, activating its effect, targeting Dryas and gaining 300 life points, again getting us ready for a future Laurel play. Next comes Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. Jasmine will activate, tributing away Twin, summoning out Lone Fire Blossom, and Lone Fire will do its Lone Fire thing and go into another Lone Fire Blossom. 
Stren able to activate, detaching one of the two parallel exceeds to grab Lone Fire back from the graveyard, and then Lone Fire is going to trigger away that Strene, triggering its effect, bringing out a Mardell. If I can find a Mardell, there we go. And activating both. That means Strene comes back for Hyperion. Strene attaches. Mardell activates, grabbing our Laurel. As you probably expected, Laurel is about to activate here, and we'll just keep on skipping the Fury Ten activation for a little bit longer. Laurel plus Mardell equals Jasmine. Laurel will then chain, gaining 500, and both Jasmines will then chain on. The first Jasmine, as before, will grab Mudan, and the second we will grab Snowdrop this time. This is where we're really leading into the full Rika engine. Mudan comes out next, tributing away that Jasmine in the extra monster zone to summon itself and tutor our Rika Glamour. Rika Glamour comes out. Perfect! So, now that we have these things, we're actually going to go into another Dryas. There we go. Dryas will activate, searching out our Sunvine Shrine. That's the way we do it. Now that we have Mudan, Jasmine, Lone Fire, we have sort of all the pillars here. We're going to use Glamour next, tributing away our Mudan to go into a very similar play of Primula into Carraway. Primula will then activate, summoning itself from the hand. And now when we activate Shrine, sending Carraway to the graveyard, Hyperion can finally activate, equipping that Rika Glamour from the graveyard. Alright, we got some monsters here. Let's make use of them. So we're going to link off our Jasmine number 2 and our Primula to go into some Avalon Melius. Melius will then bring back Lokai using this again in a minute. In the meantime, we could technically use Sunfine Twin here, banishing it and Dryas in order to bring back Jasmine from the graveyard. Now, yet again, we have an open field slot, so we can summon another Dryas. Dryas will activate, adding another Sunvine Shrine. Again, we want to grab as many shrines as possible here. All right, we got Link 3 plus Link 1 equals Rank 4. So we'll link off these two to go into Sun Avalon, Dryant, Trent, you know what I'm trying to talk about here. Which will tutor Sun Avalon Bloom. Next, while we could go into a Lokai Summon, we could go into another Jasmine. That's actually what we're going to start working towards. So we're going to use Snowdrop's effect here, tributing Lone Fire Blossom to summon the other Lone Fire Blossom from the hand and summon Snowdrop. Now we have a couple of options here. Um, at this point, I'm actually going to go directly into our engine that includes our Therions. But if we would have tributed Snowdrop instead, we could have gone into Rose Girl and gone into a quick Aroma combo. Since we got Borea, we'll use Borea's effect here shortly. But first, we want to make sure we use this shrine to get our Lokai onto the board. Next, we'll use Borea, sending the used shrine to the graveyard in order to grab Therion's ring. Therion's ring will then be activated. Tutoring, Regulus, for use at the end of our combo. And we will make another Jasmine using our Therions and using our Snowdrop. Two Jasmines on the board, one healer effect later, targeting our Dry Trenchier, and we will trigger Jasmine twice more again. Again, we'll grab a Spore, and next, um, what should we go for this time? Uh, we can go for uh, Meh. We don't have too many options left. We'll just grab a Rose Girl. That's fine. Since we have Jasmine plus Jasmine, we will link something into our Bengal Immenses. 
And now we do not want to trigger Rose Girl yet because we want to be able to make our aroma monster. We'll summon back Carrot Sending Spore. We then just want to make sure we have a level 1, and that's our Laurel. So we'll use Spore's effect, banishing Laurel away, in order to summon itself back. And now we can Synchro Summon Sweet Majorum. Sweet Majorum will activate. This is the point where you could activate Rose Girl again if you wanted, but I don't really think we want to at this point. You can use Shunbind, the Sunbind Shrine yet again, sending Rose Girl just to activate it. And Rose Girl can immediately add itself back. And then to close out our play, we would be able to summon Regulus, but Snowdrop unfortunately locks us out. So we just have our Regulus for a future turn. So we'll just use our Shrine to get back our Lokai. And we'll summon a Sunvine Thrasher. This Thrasher, since I have a Link 4, can target it. And this is our end board here. So while our end board isn't quite as strong as the negate, since we don't have our Therion's monster or King Regulus out on the board, we do still have that Perit a Hyperiton ready to negate the activation of a monster or spell. We have the Aroma combined with the Blessed Winds. We have the Sun Avalon Bloom. We have multiple Link 4 monsters. We still have the Resurgent ready. This time we just added on a Sunvine Thrasher, which has 4,000 attack and a Goyo Guardian-esque effect in place of that last Therion's monster. In short, and to summarize here, the end board is only slightly less optimal than the first setup. And this was still with having to normal summon a Loki and just having a way to make a rank four. If you haven't figured it out yet, this theme just has so many cool combos at its disposal. And that's really the whole point of this video is to highlight that. And really show what you can do when you have the cards in your hand. So let's take it one more step further and do this again. But this time, what can you combo if you only open the Lokai? So no additional monsters, just the Lokai. What can our end board be? Let's do that next. So we'll exit here. I'll change the settings to one and we'll get started. All right, let's get started with this one copy of Lokai. We'll just summon it, immediately link it away for Dryas. And since we really do need to get started here, uh, we're going to grab Sewing off the bat. Sewing will then be used to grab Twin from the deck. Twin will recover Lokai. The damage from Sewing will trigger Lot Dryas in order to get out our healer. As soon as I catch up with all the commands to what I intend to do. After this resolves, here I'm going to chain on, targeting Dryas, giving us just a little bit of an edge for our Laurel. If you didn't know this before, a lot of these play chains in the beginning are pretty similar, simply because we're trying to make the most value out of our cards, especially when we only have a single Lokai to work off of. As before, Lone Fire into Lone Fire, Lone Fire into Mardell, and Mardell ends up pulling out our Laurel. Since we got that extra 300, we can special summon Laurel from our hand and make Jasmine number 2. Remember, since Laurel is at the graveyard, that's 500 life points and a double search. The first search will be Mudan, as before. And unlike the second combo we just ran through, um, I'm actually going to grab Spore again this time, since I want to be able to reach into the Therion archetype. Next, before we tribute away our Jasmine number one, we want to make as much of a combo as possible. So we'll turn these two monsters into Melius. Melius will bring back our Lokai just to, you know, get it back into play. And now we can tribute Jasmine number one for the Moodan. Mudan will grab Glamour. Again, now that we have an extra extra monster zone that's open, we'll dry up. Dry up will grab us our Sunvine Shrine. And we can finally activate Glamour, tributing away our Mudan, searching our Primula, and searching our Carrot.
just as before. Prime Viewer will activate, summoning itself to the hand. And now we will use Shrine. Shrine sends Carrot. Carrot sends four. And we're finally back to our two level fours. We'll make our Strene, recover our Lone Fire, and continue on with our plays. There you are, Lone Fire. Now, we want to bring back with our Shrine, our Lokai, and we want to use Twin, banishing away that Dryas to bring back a job. This will let us get another search off here. Very important for us. So we'll go Lokai and Healer. Healer will target our Melias, and Jasmine will search out another monster. In this case, we can go into... Mm, we're going to have to go into Snowdrop again this time, friends. Sorry, we can't go into the Therion side yet. Now that we have our monster set up, we can go into Dry Trentier. Dry Trent will search some Avalon Bloom just to get that piece ready to go. And now with an active spore in our graveyard, we'll use Snowdrop. Tripping away our Strene to bring out Lone Fire, bring out Snowdrop, and Strena will activate from the graveyard, bringing out my Periton, and attaching that. Note we just have a Spore in our graveyard, we have an active Lone Fire Blossom, so let's use our active Lone Fire Blossom. We'll activate its effect, tributing away Snowdrop to bring back our dear friend Rose Girl. These two together let us go into Sweet Marjoram. Sweet Marjoram will activate its effect, tutoring out Blessed Winds. Now this is the main difference for this play, is that we don't have another spell and we're not going to get to one in order to trigger Hyperiton. So we have to just use this effect whenever we use a monster effect. And in this case, we'll just equip... We'll equip a Laurel to it, so that way Laurel gets the effect. Running a bit low on Steam here, we'll use Spore. Uh, we can banish just about anything at this point, it doesn't really matter. So I'll banish the, uh, the Mardell. And now we're going to link these three monsters together into our big boy, our Bengla Answer the Resurgent. Uh, this is because he has a better effect on the field and is still a Link 4 for Bloom, but a better effect on the field than Dry Trench Array, and you gotta make the most of what you got when you're on limited resources. So we'll just get down to this board, and this will be our end board, with only a Sweet Majorum with a Blessed Winds set in order to gain life points and disrupt the opponent. We have a Hyperiton, ready to negate a monster effect. And we have Sun Avalon Bloom to negate all monster effects on the field, and we have Bengalomancer Bengal in order to bounce an opponent's monster. So yeah, this board is very unexciting, especially compared to the first two. But it's important to note that this board came out of a single monster. This started with just a single loci. And in particular, a Lokai that was normal summoned. If you started with just an unexpected die, you could actually make a lot more and really go into the Therion engine. But the Lokai itself, you still get a decently respectable board to interact with the opponent, and still have a chance to win the duel in subsequent turns. So there you have it, friends. This was the last of the three combos I wanted to focus on. So let's just sort the deck and close out here. So I'm not spending the time to show full five card combos because that's not the point of the Sun Avalon. The point of this archetype is to make the most of a few cards and combo into the rest of it and use the rest of the cards you draw in your turn to just augment your plays. Using things like Therions just gives you more options, especially in the perfect scenarios where you want to build those stronger boards. And that's really where this new archetype comes in. But outside of that, hopefully you saw the key pieces, which is the Rika engine, the Aroma engine, 
the just generic good plant cards like Carrot Weight and Rose Girl. Everything really pulling their weight in order to get you the strongest end board possible. Possibly some negations, or just one. Possibly some monster disruptions. Possibly some destruction. That's all in your hands when you use this theme. So let's take a moment to talk about some additional tech cards you can run. And those are the ones I just have hiding down here in the side. So instead of your Leaper Fam, which bounces a card from either field, you can choose to go into Therion's Bull Ein, uh, which is the Warrior Therion's monster. This destroys um, a card on either field, specifically a Therion's card you have. And since it's a warrior, it synergizes quite well with Rose Paladin. So that's just another Therion's option. As another Therion's option, look to Therion's Cross. Uh, this is a normal trap card that can be used as another negation if you have an extra spell or trap search off of Borea and you don't need to search uh, the field spell in the case that you draw it already or choose to run terraforming instead. In terms of other great plants to look at, look at Stay Sailor Romarin, which is a level 4 plant tuner uh, and that sends other plants to the graveyard whenever it is sent to the graveyard by a card effect. For more extenders, look at Rose Princess, which can summon itself from the hand, as well as Right Rose Cloister, which can summon other plants from your hand, but I've used those a lot in other plant videos, so I didn't want to reuse them here. Rose Lover exists as a way to banish itself from the graveyard and summon any plant from your hand, again, minimalizing the focus on Snowdrop, since Snowdrop really does use up your non-plant summons and restricts you just to summoning plants for the rest of the turn. But if you really want to dig into the Rika, feel free to look at Rika Petal as well. Um, this is the starter for the Rika archetype, so it can be used as a starter for some of your Sun Avalon plays. And the last plant in the main deck to take a look at is actually another Sunvine card, Sunvine Maiden. This one is a pseudo hand trap that protects your cards uh, whenever a plant monster is targeted by a card effect. A uh, plant monster is someone from the extra deck. So it can be used to protect both your Sun Avalon uh, and your Sun Vine spells and traps once it's on the board as well. Moving along to alternatives to your Zephyros and Foolish Burial, there are other cards that fill a similar role in that being a small engine that makes the most of being sent to the graveyard by the activation cost of Sun Vine Shrine. And those are Perform H Trick Clown, which immediately summons itself back and inflicts damage, again, when it summons itself back in the graveyard and inflicts damage to you, that's perfect for comboing with Sun Avalon Dryas. And the other option is Stardust Trail, which is just a more generic level 4 monster. But this one can summon itself from the graveyard whenever a monster is tributed. So you can use it uh, whenever you tribute something with Lone Fire, with any Eureka monsters, if you tribute something with Glamour. Um, or if, even if you tribute something with Jasmine, and that's the benefit of running this as an alternative level 4 tech. For extra deck options, look at Teardrop of the Rika Queen, the rank 8 that can serve as an alternative to Hyperiton if instead of additional disruption and negation, you want to turn to additional monster removal. And since this one tributes, that means you don't even have to worry about destruction-proof monsters. While I haven't done a lot of testing here, because this card was just recently revealed, Peone the Sylvan Dancer is a great option as well to consider, and something that I've been thinking about a little bit closer when I've been looking at plant decks. It can summon up to two excavated plant monsters from your deck, but since they can't be used as link material, um, you have to either attribute those monsters you excavate away with Lone Fire, or use them as your Xyz material for your Strene, or use them as Synchro material. Uh, so this might have a home in a slightly different plant hybrid build, but it's still a cool thing to check out. And then lastly, on the spells you can consider running, look at World Legacy Succession. This is a link deck that leaves a lot of open zones. In that case, it's just another copy of Monster Reborn. And finally, we have Sunvine Crossbreed, which is the last of the Sunvine support cards that is slightly better. Uh, it can make a good board better, but it can't really help you make a good board in the first place, which is why I choose not to run it. So yeah, 
this is the Sunvine, Sunseed, Sun Avalon, take your pick of how you want to call it strategy. And I really hope you got to learn something today. And thanks for listening as I walk through some of the combos, all the deck build. I'm sure this is going to be end up being one of my longer Let's Build videos. So hopefully you took away some of the cool combos that are really still available to plants, even in the modern age, as we move farther and farther away from the good old days of plant synchro builds. Either way, I'll catch you next week with more profiles. Thanks for listening, and for now, Quincy out. Thank you.